Hello everybody. All right, we're back again in this video series on how to fix an abusive instructor. All right. Um, I think this is a very important topic. I mean, I get it. It is 2022 right now, and some of the stuff that used to happen back in the 70s and 80s, just I, I don't think it can happen uh, without severe repercussions. All right. But um, I, I said that one of the first tools I was going to use for this is the Dojo Kun, uh, which is uh, a lot of Shotokan people recite this at the end of every class, right? I remember doing it. Um, now, this is interesting. And, and in, in doing this research, an interesting thing came up. So usually, um, you say them in Japanese, and sometimes you say them again in English, and you say histotsu, which means first, but you say first after every one, so it's a way of implying they're all first. They're all really important, even though they're in a certain order. Number one was seek perfection of character. Again, sounds fantastic. It, you don't really have a definition of character, so we might get into that. Uh, number two, be faithful is what we used to say. But I'm going to say it in Japanese. Mokoto no michi wa manuro koto. Which actually it means more like, uh, I've heard it translated another way, I've read it. Be faithful and respect the way of truth. So that's a, be faithful and respect the way of truth. It could also be be faithful in respecting the way of truth. And that's very different than be faithful. We were always said it means be faithful to what? Probably sensei, right? A little bit of sensei worship going on there. But be faithful and respect the way or guard the way of truth. I think that means respect truth, be honest. Now that's a whole different ball game because if you're faithful faithful to someone and honest to them, sometimes that involves telling them inconvenient truths, very uncomfortable truths and that's kind of what this video is about and uh, it is in response to uh, something Jordan Burke asked me which is what would you have him do um, number three is endeavor you know try hard work hard go team right number four respect others courtesy very important I mean and then last one is refrain from violent behavior boy this is what this series is all about refraining from violent behavior hitting someone with a wrench who's 11 years old on the head um, I've talked to a few people from that time and I'm not the first person he hit on the head with a weapon <laughs> all right and um, we're talking people that were not his students and we're talking people that were minors back then um, so yeah all right I think there is something extremely important that is missing from the dojo kun that is missing from the tenets of taekwondo you know uh, integrity see integrity courtesy loyalty bravery indomitable spirit that was in taekwondo they have their version of the dojo kun i mean there's more i, I have in my little grimoire you know i have dojo kun from multiple arts and information for mul multiple martial arts that I keep handy. And I also have Funakoshi's 20 precepts written here. I actually study these all the time. I have the Goju Ryu Dojo Kun. Be, be courageous, truth, mind, and body. Practice daily and protect the essence of traditional Karate Do. Strive towards the essence of Goju Ryu. Five, never give up. I have the seven precepts of Shaolin, never give up, always practice, integrate yin and yang, turn yourself into zero, nurture your body, apply great desire, cut off desire, interesting, ten Wing Chun principles, and then there are ten, ten I, I even created my own ten key attributes of a martial artist, and also we have Sun Tzu's The Five Virtues of the General, and that's actually where that may have inspired the Dojo Kun. But it says wisdom, sincerity, benevolence, courage, and strictness. All right, Musashi six steps to victory. I need, I even have written down here the seventeen principles of success by Dale Carnegie. But those dojo kun. I mean, this instructor that has a history of abuse and assault. Um, 
would have us recite the dojo kun after every workout. It was considered very important. Uh, I think what happens is we're not very good at self-reflection, right? I talked about an incident when I was a teenager. That was my first job, like workplace that I ever worked at. And um, there was someone there that I was trying to talk to, and he was a black belt in Shotokan. I know because I watched his black belt test when I was a kid. And I began conversing with him, and he didn't like... I was just basically giving technical opinions on the difference of styles and methods of martial arts. I was By then I was very well read in martial arts and well read in general. And I think he took it as a personal attack and from then on he just mocked me constantly. He used to call me G.I. Joe with a Kung Fu grip. And you know, I, I did want to go in the military and later I did. I guess that's mock worthy. Um, and you know there was an incident at work where I had to wear this costume and I was literally dying of heat stroke and I was thirsty and I had to walk up in this stupid costume and uh, someone had already you know another co-worker had gotten heat stroke wearing it earlier that day and so I was wearing this thing and I went to this individual because he was there I said you know can you like I had this, I, I, I think it was a Hamburglar outfit and I had this gigantic nose and when I went to go to the, and I had these giant gloves on and I went to try to get a, a Coke out of the machine because I was just so co so hot and so thirsty. And I couldn't, not with the gloves and not with the hands, so I walked over to the co-worker, I tapped him on the head, I'm like, you know, hey, can you, can you get me a, a soda, it's really hot in here. And he just began mocking me and mocking me and mocking me and, you know, I got mad and I, I, I attempted to assault him. It got broken up pretty quick. No one really got hurt. I don't think so. But I mean, I you know, first of all, that was wrong, what I did. Um, picking a fight with anybody because you're mentally frustrated and you're being insulted and you're feeling bad is, is not civilized behavior, not in this country, right? If I would have hit him on the head with a wrench, that would have been assault and battery with a deadly weapon. Um, at least I didn't attack a minor. I attacked a bigger... I, I attacked an older, stronger, more well-trained black belt. I was just a yellow belt at the time in a different style of martial art, plus, you know, my little white belt training in Shotokan and what I learned from books and magazines because I was really wanted to get better. Um, but you know, that was bad what I did. And part of the reason why I did something bad was I had an abusive instructor and I had an abusive father. And, um, I guess that's, you know, in my world, that's what you did when someone angered you, disrespected you, or said or did something you didn't like. You lashed out. I'm not that way anymore, although deep inside those impulses exist. I've, you know, tried to live some of the dojo kun. I've always thought, you know, respect others and endeavor and refrain from violent behavior that always stuck out. I'm like, violent behavior, all we do here is violent behavior. It was a paradox. I had to unravel it. I didn't unravel it in my teens. I didn't unravel it in my early 20s. I had to go to war and figure out what this was, you know, the paradox of human violence, right? So, Jordanberg and, and anybody from that school, anybody from that instructor's lineage, I know, you, like, you, you're going to not like me, all right? You're, you're going to want to hit me on the head with a wrench just for saying these things. And uh, I want to help you. I want to help you objectively look at my words. So what I want you to do is pretend that I'm a black belt in Shotokan and that, you know, I belong to your group because I have yet, if, w when I meet people that have a strong basis in, in like a traditional, actually it's semi-traditional Japanese karate who never did anything else, I find that they're, they're almost like the religious fundamentalists of, of the karate world. And um, when I meet Shotokan people that did Kung Fu and, and other styles of Karate or Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, they have a markedly different attitude, 
right? And I, for some reason, a lot of Japanese stylists hold a lot of people like me that do uh, Chinese and Filipino martial arts in, in contempt, at least from that generation. So just pretend I'm one of you. If, if this was one of you saying this, it would feel different. Maybe you wouldn't feel so insulted, right? Because this is not meant as an insult. This is meant as a quest for peace. We as martial artists, whether we do Kung Fu, Karate, Taekwondo, or Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, should actually be seeking peace. We, we learn to war, but we're told and we tell our students and our peers that this makes us more peaceful because we can walk away from violence because we have confidence, right? And if we are attacked and we have to do something in the realm of violence that it'll be proportionate, it will be controlled. So this is the first lesson, right? Seek perfection of character. Well, I always think that a person of good character obeys the law. And I feel like the Dojo Kun leave this out. They say they, they don't tell you to know the law. Know the law at the very least. Know the law of the place where you live and the country that you're in. Because if you were raised in a country or, or in a place where violence was sanctioned against certain people, certain things in certain ways, when you move to another country, it won't always be that way. Right? It will, for example, if you grew up in an area controlled by the Taliban or maybe in Saudi Arabia, uh, seeing someone drinking a beer is actually a crime and you might actually be required by law to, to stop them, attack them, chastise them, right? It would be considered a serious thing in this country, in many countries, even in many Muslim majority countries. If you see someone drinking a beer, that's not a problem. It happens every day. Go to Turkey. People drink all the time, right? In public, in restaurants, right? Um, so, if you, your master, if your sensei is that kind of person, especially if the school is new and getting started right and you see them do something like this say something be faithful in in the way of truth be truthful be faithful to your sensei who you respect by being truthful to them to help them not break the law to help them not indulge in violent behavior the person teaching you to refrain from violent behavior him or herself should refrain from violent behavior that is an important lesson it should seem obvious and I, again I'm kind of amazed that I have to fight uphill over this right but I do and I get it, you know, what's done is done. I had a violent example from violence in my family, a violent martial arts educator who acted out violence like that and had a history of it. And so I behaved like I was expected to, violently. Someone dishonors you, says the thing you don't want to hear, that makes you unhappily by behavior and words you hit, you hit them seemed normal at the time now I know it's not normal right and I don't claim to have the physical skills that that instructor had and I don't claim to have the pedigree and you know all the honor and everything but in that respect I have become better than the example I was given right so that's the Dojo Kun. This is actually just the first part of this lesson, right? But I think it starts with obey the law. The law says that you cannot simply strike out at people for saying things or being annoying or being stupid, even for being offensive, right? 
the the law doesn't say that if you as a trained martial artist if, if someone comes up to you and insults you insults your wife insults your kids that you can't automatically break their jaw even if it could be argued in court that those were extenuating circumstances and you were suffering from temporary insanity I've heard these things right but if you simply hit a minor just out of childhood or even an older child who's a teen about to turn into a man if you simply hit them for being loud or rude without any intervening steps I mean even if it was your child the law says you can't do that do that to someone else's child right I also noticed um, uh, again you have these strict instructors who um, sort of enjoy hitting people uh, for infractions of a law the person doesn't know that they they should obey, right? Like they don't know in this dojo it's a law. If you speak up, I kick you in the jaw and break your jaw, or you know, um, <laughs> that these self same schools don't use medicine bags, don't don't have many of the abdominal training regimens you see in kickboxing. They don't do full contact sparring with, with gear and go for knockouts. They don't compete in knockout tournaments. They don't, um, you know, uh, for, for, for example, compete in full contact, those violent instructors, right? So, yeah, uh, they're great and they're deadly and they're teaching you this noble philosophy of being prepared yet being peaceful they're not living up to it and so even though those masters whether they be Asian or not whether it's you know whatever the style is although they may be great in all those aspects me I've managed to figure out how to maybe yell at someone before I hit them how to maybe push them out before after I yelled at them and then before I hit them and if I have to hit them maybe I'm not trying to hit them with an object there's an old Okinawan saying if you put out your hand pull back your anger if you put out your anger pull back your hand I've read that in many books on on uh, Zen especially as it relates to karate right so why is it I can figure this out and some great master cannot? I'm nothing in terms of the martial art world compared to that person. But I've learned this lesson. And if someone as insignificant as me can pick that up, there's no reason why you shouldn't.